Hello again. In this talk, I wanted to share some thoughts on the US FDA pre-approval and routine CGMP inspections uh, in the context of complex generics and biosimilars. As we discussed previously, biosimilars and generics fall under two different statutes or laws in the US. And traditionally, they have had a very different approach to GMP inspection. BLAs, by definition, require a license for the facility, whereas generics did not. Biosimilars have um, traditionally have a team-based inspection. Generics, complex generics particularly, are moving in that direction. So building on my previous talk, expect the unexpected, I wanted to focus on the point the reference product manufacturing process is claimed to be Six Sigma. And what are the ramifications, what are the consequences, potential consequences of that happening uh, on the market penetration, market acceptance, and the assurance associated with biosimilar, um, uh, uh, which may not be deemed interchangeable or as were declared interchangeable by FDA. Really, this is the topic I wanted to discuss. To place this discussion in a proper context, I wanted to share with you uh, the interactions and interrelationships between complete response letters, CRLs, that FDA is issuing for the development of uh, um, for after the CMC review process and the Form 483 observations and warning letters. These three things come together uh, interact in ways that essentially give you a signal that uh, FDA does not have the confidence or assurance in your development um, process validation, continued process verification, and overall in your quality system. Now, we also discussed previously that in the experience economy with the um, social media being so prominent. Um, furthermore, the political polarization, anxiety, fear, uh, fear of imported drugs uh, is so high. Assurance of quality also has an impact on adherence rate of patients uh, and as well as, I think, prescribing practices of physicians. So this becomes a very significant and complex uh, topic and challenge to manage. So assurance, not making mistakes, not having warning letters, not having complete response letters, and not having a negative media and social media coverage has become a very important. Who makes the medicine I take is a very critical question that patients have started asking and they are seeking out uh, uh, corporations, manufacturers that they have confidence in and are actually asking for, I rather have, uh, a, if I have a generic or a biosimilar, I rather have one from this company or that company. So that is a very fundamental and important consideration. So for example, a recent warning letter to a biosimilar manufacturer says, your firm failed to thoroughly investigate any unexplained discrepancy or failure of a batch or any of its components to meet any of its specifications, whether or not the batch has already been distributed. A failure investigation, out of specification investigation, invalidation of out of specification investigations has become a very important consideration. And FDA to express its no confidence also has increased the number of uh, uh, letters where FDA states CGMP consultant recommended. When, when FDA recommends a CGMP consultant, that is a very, very uh, serious consideration because uh, CGMPs are basic foundation and FDA just told this company they don't know uh, they, the company doesn't know what it's doing. And I think this is something we have to work to avoid. As we shared previously, competencies for effective pharmaceutical quality management system requires appreciation for system 
um, uh, psychology of change on on the soft skill sides but at the same time it requires theory of knowledge and knowledge of variation and inability to get to root cause investigation is an illustration of all four aspects so i think we our system of good practices ex says we expect an ordered and complicated system uh, for ordered and complicated system good practices work and we have to know uh, when we cross the ledges between order and disorder crossing the the ledges between order and disorder is very easy in our system so we need to maintain caring propensities and disposition necessary to be aware and respond to emergencies quickly and appropriately we need to understand to appreciate a system we need to understand the types of system the types of systems are simple complicated complex and chaotic chaotic is not disorder chaotic is a system that is prone to initial conditions uh, very sensitive to initial conditions and therefore it's unpredictable because of that sensitivity and 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 a chaotic system uh, can be a simple complicated or complex system which is which happens to be very sensitive to starting conditions what are the starting conditions starting conditions are your raw materials starting conditions are your uh, the education training and experience of people and other aspects so when you are not able to get to the root cause that means cause and effect relationships are not known when cause and effect relationships are not known you're already in a complex or chaotic system and and that means the development was incomplete and and uh, incomplete in its ability to reduce complexity and uncertainty to a level of uh, uh, a, a complicated system uh, inability to reduce uncertainty is the at the heart of a biosimilar the step by step biosimilar development program you go from analytical characterization to to uh, to to clinical assessment in order to reduce uncertainty and then that is a very serious consequence so i think as we saw before i think the generic drug sector is in chaos currently and and adherence rates uh, have been impacted by even change in color which is which we never considered very important and and uh, and fda had to issue a guideline on uh, shape and size matters they could not mention color in that because color often is a trademark although and then fda is still trying to increase generic competition while fda is promoting continuous manufacturing and and has declared continuous manufacturing has a high impact on drug quality that's a signal that we are moving into a system where um, continuous manufacturing would have a high assurance of quality because that's one way of getting to six sigma but there are other ways to get to six sigma or low rate of errors yet many companies have breaches in assurance of data integrity or bad eye warning letters and 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 the hospitals in the us and the public in general are fed up with drug companies and in this particular case in new york times uh, january 2018 there was a news item that many hospitals have starting their own manufacturing system so we are at a very difficult situation at a precipice again and the journey for many companies is to go from 666 which is an evil designation to two sigma to six sigma and as as we noted before uh, fda reorganized its office of quality and created a new office of quality to seek one voice between reviewers inspectors all along um, and and there are many reasons for that one of the dimensions i want to emphasize now is integration of fda facility evaluation and inspection for human drugs a concept of operation um, a pre-approval facility evaluation led by CDER and ORA participation, pre-approval inspection led by ORA um, with CDER participation. So you see that uh, the team approach to biological inspection is now coming for small molecule complex generics also. And I think uh, this is a clear indication that uh, future warning letters, future um, observations will focus heavily on out of specification investigation 
consumer complaints and other aspects. So alongside the real world evidence, uh, um, manufacturing state of control, suitability and capability of your manufacturing system is fundamental. Suitability and capability of your manufacturing system depends on suitability and capability of your starting conditions, your raw materials. The people, education, training and experience has become a very significant aspect. And with, with the apprehension, with the concern of about imported drug, um, FDA seeking one voice. And if you look at the FDA goals uh, starting that were announced on February 2018, the message is very clear. Promote domestic manufacturing, advance new domestic uh, drug industry, uh, bring medtech manufacturing home, create a new medical data enterprise, advance real world evidence, modernize generic drug development and review to enable increased competition but in the context of, uh, of uh, I think, domestic manufacturing, increase, increased manufacturing scrutiny, and then in that regard. I think the roadmap for suitability and capability of manufacturing processes have been laid out for many years now. I think um, uh, ICH Q8, Q9, Q10, Q11, now the draft Q, Q, Q12, FDS process validation with continued process verification, all have existed for many years. Yet many companies are unable to uh, connect the dots, integrate and interrelate between these guidelines, this knowledge that has existed. And also to do the same thing, they, they still work in silos of R&D, regulatory tech transfer, uh, operations and quality unit. And I think this gap has to be filled and this gap can be filled only by appreciation of a system and understanding psychology of change. So people measurement system manufacturing process, a life cycle approach, which ICHQ10 has outlined uh, for, for several years now. So to give assurance in the real world, to ensure adherence by patients in the real world, to ensure availability of medicines in the real world, to assure affordability, you have to put in assurance, adherence, availability, and affordability on the pre-market and pre-approval segments. And that really is the way to progress. Now, one of the case examples that I had an opportunity to evaluate was Amgen's journey to Six Sigma. Without the burden of uh, any warning letters such as uh, breaches in assurance of data integrity, it took Amgen about 10 years to achieve this, this, uh, this goal. And, and um, in, in US, uh, freedom um, of information as well as um, uh, 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 freedom of speech come together. Amgen can advertise that they are Six Sigma. And I think that Six Sigma aspect uh, can have a important consideration. For example, we have we discussed previously, therapeutic equivalence is made up of four parts, pharmaceutical equivalence, bioequivalence, labeling, GMP. For biosimilars, pharmaceutical equivalence is a big challenge. Um, labeling is different. And now GMP uh, comparability, we have not never talked about comparability of GMP. But I think we are moving in that direction of uh, are, is your GMP comparable? And we will achieve, we will sort of move in that direction through quality metrics and through considerations of uh, warning letters, uh, recalls, uh, patient complaints, and all of this sort of comes together in real world and interchangeability uh, considerations, I believe, will have to account for all these aspects. So interchangeability of biosimilar will depend on that. Why did it take Amgen such a long time to achieve the low re error rate of 3.4 uh, defects per million opportunity of Six Sigma? I think it goes to psychology of change. Um, uh, much of the industry um, does not want, was not willing to change. Why? Victims of our own success. Products have strong patent protections. We are isolated from economic cycles. Regulatory system promoted and encouraged to inspect and test quality in. 
the 21st century initiative that I had the opportunity to lead at FDA started to change that paradigm to quality by design. And, and quality by design is now becoming a reality after, after almost 18 years. Uh, so new prescription for drug makers update the plans. Why is pharmaceutical manufacturing lagging behind those of potato chip and laundry detergent was a front page article in, in Wall Street Journal on 3 September 2003. So 15 years later, I think we are now at a tipping point uh, for, for moving forward to Six Sigma. And Six Sigma a level of errors uh, really is uh, going to be a hallmark and benchmark and and will i think i believe will have an impact on market penetration because it it will be related to adherence and confidence patients and providers have uh, particularly in the context of social media and media coverage of the negative event amgen's journey uh, required a change in mindset, psychology of change, uh, change in mindset, and it focused directly on effective root cause investigations of out of specification, and it took a long time to institute risk-based classification system to to uh, uh, to focus on processes that are not stable uh, or capable. Uh, improving trending and non-conformance, improving management review, develop network metric control plans, standardized root cause analysis, develop technical writing course for investigators, involve quality science in investigations, asking why, 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 why for root cause investigation is critical. Quality by design takes the why, 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 why up front to define the QTPP uh, and to identify the CQAs, to identify the CPPs, and to do risk assessment, to, est to, to establish processes that are safe, stable, and control, and, and, to, and to transfer that knowledge and know-how to operations to maintain stability and capability through continued process verification. So that really is at the heart of this issue. ICHQ10 product lifecycle approach also sort of focused on this. Management responsibility is the key. Leaders must commit to monitoring manufacturing process and product attributes using familiar roadmap to process capabilities. Leaders focused on poorly performing manufacturing process and to, to identify and, and improve processes that need improvement, such as processes at P, PPK or uh, pro, performance index of uh, lower than one. Uh, and effective root cause investigation was the key. I think that, that is the key challenge to, to many companies at the moment. Leaders focused on prevention of errors. Uh, significant emphasis placed on qualification and certification of investigators. That's a starting point. Education, training, and experience and professional development becomes a key attribute of a successful company. And I think we are moving in that direction right now. So in summary, I think if I don't look, there is no problem to problem solving, to prevention of error. Those are the stages of development of individuals and corporations. And when you succeed, the power of error reduction is shown by the data from Amgen, where I think it took many years, but the, the out end result is very satisfying, not only in terms of professional satisfaction, but also in terms of money, saving money. So previously I had introduced the concept of immunity to change in the, in the category of psychology of change. Now development is equal to overcoming immunity to change. Um, to be able to address complexity and uncertainty of the type of biosimilars and complex generics, you have to adopt a mindset of, of uh, you know what you're doing and you engage with the regulators through their meetings uh, to, to have a collaboration and not take the position, uh, tell me FDA what to do uh, or file first to figure it out later. That is a, a recipe for disaster. So if I look at uh, uh, the journey of Amgen, they went from if I don't look, there is no problem to problem solving to prevention of error. In terms of adult human development, 
those line up very nicely with the, the con con constructive development theory of adult human development of Professor Keegan. And to progress in that, you have to overcome your immunity to change. So the immunity to change is made up of three parts, change prevention, feeling system, and knowing system. We have to attend pay attention to the feeling system within the uh, corporation. And that is something we don't do very well uh, because we think we are professionals. We focus on being objective and, and analytical. That is necessary, but not sufficient. You have to build your appreciation for system and you have to recognize the psychology of change or immunity to change. Uh, you have to overcome um, the, the emotional aspects of uh, management, of professional working, of collaboration. And without collaboration, you don't get to totality of evidence uh, in a way. So if you want to think about immunity to change, think about a very simple model. Um, you have a R Russian nested doll model as an example. And, and for the intrapersonal, for to judging where your development is yourself, Think about uh, our own development. We want to look good. We want to be good. Uh, uh, we want to do good and we want to be seeing good. So each of those development stages is achieved through our education and training, but the more advanced stages of development only occur through our experiential learning and experiential development. And experience is more than just practical contact with uh, an event experience also means uh, feeling and how do we feel inside internal validation is the key so feeling system fear of looking bad if i don't look there is no problem and the illusionary power of procrustes one size fits all uh, and you don't accept anything else that's not the way uh, we can manage complexity and uncertainty of a complex generic or a biosimilars. The change prevention system, corporate management rewarding file first and taking FD approved and validated as gospel and a reason to set expectations of right first time on staff, that makes them prone to uh, breaches in data integrity. The regulator and regulatory system struggle quite a bit, but now is moving in the direction of quality by design. And how we set specification has been a challenge in many parts of the regulatory system. And, and I think this is where the engagement and meetings with the regulators in the step-by-step -step development process is a wonderful opportunity to do that. Humans develop in stages. Our development goes from impulse control to imperialist, to socialized mind, to, to self-authored mind, which is not shown there, uh, the fourth order, and then to self-transforming mind. Systems thinking, appreciation for system really begins at after the, at the, the fourth order of consciousness when we have internally validated our own knowledge. We are self-authored in what we do and, and, and how we know and what we know. Uh, and and uh, clearly, I think we need to be self-transforming to develop further. Knowing system knowledge management is not information management. What we know is important how we know what we know is equally important. So pay attention to how you know what we know. Question the information you accept. Um, and, and you need to know authenticity, uh, accuracy, and precision of information that you use. We must be self-authored in every job and every level of a corporation or a regulatory agency. Both analysis and synthesis are essential. And, and, and this is the key. How good is your quality overall summary of your development report? And I think becomes a key test uh, to, to do this. And in case of biosimilars, particularly with the step-by-step uh, -step development approach with multiple meetings with FDA, this becomes an opportunity you cannot uh, uh, really um, fail to use appropriately. Knowing is necessary, but not sufficient. Wisdom is action. Care, knowledge, and action. How we feel, think, and act must be aligned to overcome uh, immunity to change or inertia. And anybody who registers for a medical intervention is a patient. So in that sense, we all are patients. So 
the doing system, the knowing system, the feeling system, and the change prevention system have to be considered. So if you look at Amgen's journey, um, the Amgen's journey progressed uh, focusing on analytical characterization of raw material, the starting condition, starting point, the uh, uh, and 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 agreements with the, their suppliers was the key. Management involvement uh, in every step, continual monitoring, um, and uh, understanding the sources of variations, particularly of your analytical method. Benchmarking your analytical method so that you know um, you can keep decreasing the assay variability. Training, qualification, and certification, and above all a focus on supply chain control so this is uh, these are the critical elements that you need to think about so we are a system we work in a system and we have to improve the system we work in so to understand how you need to know the types of systems simple complicated complex and chaotic Chaotic systems are extremely sensitive to starting conditions. Complex systems are systems where cause and effect relationships are known after the fact are not known very well. So if you are unable to get to the root cause, your investigation of order of specification is not getting you to the root cause, you are repeating the errors, you are either in a complex world, complex system, or, or you are in a chaotic system. So you have to think differently there. Good practices, SOPs, project management work very effectively only in the complicated and simple system. In simple system, you can even go to best practices because uh, cause and effect is uh, very self-evident. In a complicated system, cause and effect requires certain expert knowledge and expert judgment. So it's not as evident. So, so remember which type of system you are in. So if you're in a complex system, Emerging practices when cause and effect is only evident in hindsight or after the fact. So the whole idea of uh, uh, research and development is to reduce complexity to the level of complicated so that good practices would work. The entire uh, system of uh, evidence uh, collection for biosimilar is based on reducing complexity and uncertainty. And if, if you have residual uncertainty, you may get an approval for biosimilar, but you may not get an approval for interchangeable. And interchangeability is going to be a key aspect. So just to remind us, pharmaceutical quality system is a hybrid system and I think how we operate and how we function requires that knowledge and I won't go through this list of all the aspects but the key signal of your system what type of system you're in is your ability to uh, do effective root cause investigation so that you make the corrections in time and you don't repeat the same mistakes or errors from occurring again Corrective action, preventive action, when successful, suggest you are in a complicated system, your good practices are working, and therefore that is where FDA uh, inspectors would, 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 would be satisfied. If not, they would ask you to hire an external consultant, and that is extremely, extremely uh, serious and bad situation. So best practices without considering complications and complexities post risk. One size doesn't fit all. Um, uh, compendial standards and uh, the defaults that we tend to use in the small molecule generic world like SUPAC 10X, fortunately have not been as popularly used in biotech, but biotech is also prone to similar um, default situations and, and legacy challenges. Um, so I think that that is an important message. Pharmaceutical quality system is a complex adaptive system, at least at the management level. At the level of the operators, it has to be complicated so that the SOP, if they follow, should yield predictable effects. And if SOPs, when followed correctly, do not produce uh, uh, predictable effects, then the, the system has become complex. 
Not appreciating complexity leads to emergency and chaos. Many contemporary practices are best practices applied erroneously without consideration for complexity. Please remember that. So making sense of pharmaceutical quality. Um, here are um, some ways of thinking about how do we make sense of pharmaceutical quality for the 21st century. If we are only relying on opinions of others, such as FDA, waiting for FDA to give a guidance, our sense making is checking the box. If our checking the box approach, um, we are not uh, able to address uh, complexity and uncertainty and our responsiveness is to warning letters, to patient complaints, consumer complaints is not adequate, it's red. To be systematic, we have to be fourth order. We have to be self authored Quality is above and beyond USP and FDA. Here we start building brand identity and, and we start building confidence in quality. To be really mature, uh, um, you have to appreciate systems of systems, maturity to shape standards uh, where we can deal with uh, creating competitive advantage for complex and novel product categories. And I think uh, the larger companies are able to do that. But in the 21st century, even the smaller companies will have to play a significant role or a leadership role to shape that. And for that, they will have to create a culture of uh, quality within the corporation to be able to achieve this goal. So there are many gaps between what we know and what we can implement. My fundamental uh, consideration is that professional development is the key. Education, training, and experience is, is, is essential. And experiential learning is a path to professional development. We must invest in development to be self-authored at every level. So I think the training we do for SOP, even for operators, operators need to be self-authored in the job they're doing, not, uh, not depend on external GMP consultants to write the SOP. They should be writing the SOP themselves. Even if they don't know English, that's perfectly fine. Then you can translate that into English uh, as necessary. I think it is an important consideration. The pharmaceutical quality for the 21st century is occurring in a highly polarized socio-political environment, thus making it difficult to achieve and maintain a high order of consciousness. We must work collaboratively. We all are regulators, I think is the key message here. And um, the, uh, the, the advantage for companies that are self-authored uh, uh, have supported professional development is humongous, but the challenge to companies that are not uh, supporting professional development that do not have their higher order of a critical mass of higher order of consciousness is a significant challenge. Unfortunately, much of the industrial sector has been socialized to check the box. And that, uh, in, within that, some make up hidden checklist to get the job done. Uh, with violations of GMP and bad eye. Remember, this is this is not just a pharma problem. This is not just a biopharma problem. This is a human problem because we have a tendency to, to focus on economic growth and economic growth trumps economic development. Our supply is a global supply chain. Uh, we have variable education, training and experience and uh, assurance patients need has been increasing. Assurance is a cause and the effect is real world therapeutic outcomes. So real world assurance and adherence uh, with outcome based reimbursement, pay for performance and value based pricing, adherence to good practices and adherence to prescription, I think comes into play in a, in a very interesting way. Uh, and I think we have to reduce errors and uh, we have to improve adherence so that uh, patients will adhere to the prescriptions. Expect the unexpected, I think. Um, so I think I want to end here with the question, uh, have you considered the consequence for your approved or in development biosimilar product when the reference product manufacturing process is, is claimed to be Six Sigma? What will happen to the level of assurance you provide? What will happen to the likelihood of you getting interchangeable designation for your biosimilar? Thank you for listening.
if you have any questions please uh, email me my email address is down on every slide i'll be glad to answer any question thank you for listening